all access. An inside look at what it takes to operate Iowa's largest entertainment and convention facilities. This is Iowa Event Center All Access. From Iowa everywhere. And what's up, everyone? Welcome to All Access with the Iowa Event Center here on the Iowa Everywhere Podcast Network. We are in the Channel Seed Studios. Matt Van Winkle, Adam Flack, once again joining me. How you doing, Adam? Good, Matt. Getting ready for a big weekend. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Good. You've got Caitlin Clark coming this weekend. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, we're going to look back at some of the some of the best basketball players you and I have seen come through Wells Fargo Arena. Man, the arena has been open how many years now? Has it been almost 20 years? And we've seen um, some great talent. Almost 20. And, and yeah. you know, looking back in, in prep for today, I mean, we've had a lot more basketball than maybe a lot of people remember. So it'd be fun yeah. to take a look back and and see what some of those college names are that, that yeah. played through. It's from high school to college. You got, obviously, the G League, the D League formerly. Um, we even had some NBA players come through there. We'll get to that in a little bit. At the end of the show, Chris Williams got to sit down with WWE wrestler Chad Gable. Looking forward to that. You guys got Raw coming up on Monday. Um, man, it's, it's always busy over there, but it's, it's just picking up, isn't it? It's leading right into the holidays, right? Yep. So, you know, tons of opportunity to get down here and see the wolves in the wild and you know, sprinkle in some WWE and college basketball. I mean, you think you got anything that a, that a sports fan would want over the next few weeks. Hey, I got a fun story for you. So did you see this, the cheese at citrus bowl, obviously where the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to play down in Florida, they announced that they're going to have this, this this section on the field called the flexin section. Did you see this? I did not. What are they really doing? <laughs> so the flexin section is going to be the section on the field where this celebrity barber is going to be cutting hair and there's going to be like a hot tub. This this is giving me vibes back to Jack Trice days when they had the hot tub in the south end zone. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're ahead of their time, right? Like they, they yeah. did it. People must have seen it. That's, you know, I think there's a couple hot tubs out there in Arizona and now at this cheese at Citrus Bowl, maybe Jack Trice was well ahead of its time. <laughs> they had to have been. What? What? Have you guys had any weird like gimmicks or promos? Have you been to any like you know minor league stadiums? Often will do that, uh, yeah. like promos to get people in or like on on field access. You know, obviously Arizona Diamondbacks famously have the hot tubs in their outfield. But have you been to any events where you've seen some weird promotions like that? You know, I don't know that I've been to that extent. You know, minor league sports does a great job of getting doing the promo items and getting people in the door. I mean, we obviously with with our teams here have done the couches at courtside or the, sure. the Flicks brew house seats that we've seen, you know, where you, you couple in the the nice recliners and movie tickets and, and the game. But mm -hmm. I would say, you know, just knowing about the St. Paul Saints, you know, I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with that team, but uh, the the Vec family up there, like they've they've done a ton of cool stuff, and you know, I don't think any of our teams have gone as creative as a Michael Vick chew toy like they did up there, but uh, <laughs> they, they do do some cool bobbleheads and things here. A Michael that that had to have been for a cause or something. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure it was after his little run in. Yeah, the okay. Fighting, so that's that's too bad. So so I some people know this. I grew up in California, so in the Bay Area, uh, there's a lot of minor league uh, professional baseball. But where I grew up in San Jose is the San Jose Giants. In every home game, they'd have somebody called the beer batter. Do you have your, have you heard of a beer batter before? Do you know no. what that is? No. So so they would pick a a player from the opposing team, and if that guy struck out, that next half inning, beers would be half price. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, so it's a good way to get people in, and it, it gets people like rooting against the other team even more for them to get yeah. a strikeout. So they play that roll out the barrel song, you know, the we got wow, okay. That sounds like a yeah, yeah. like a Savannah Bananas type promotion. It, or it was pretty funny. So um yeah, yeah it, it was one of those things where I was a kid at the time, so I was more just like cheering for it so my dad could go get a, a half price <laughs> half right. price beer, but it was more fun just get the whole stadium involved, but so, uh, so back to this cheese it thing. Yeah. Who are the haircuts for? Is, are these for I don't know players it, or fans my guess is they'll probably them? I don't know. I have to read into it more, but they I, my guess is they'll probably like pick people from the stands and bring them down. I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't know. That'd be my guess. Be a celebrity barber, <laughs> but that's that's pretty cool. I guess you can be a celebrity in any yep. industry. Well, speaking of celebrities, you guys had some some big names come through this past week. Old Dominion, Chase Rice had their show. Did you get a chance to check that out or hear anything about the shows? fantastic show i mean the the crowd interaction we were yeah. fortunate enough to to get to say hello to them before the 
uh, before the show and and present a gift to them and cool. uh, very gracious to be in Des Moines and and from what I understand like everybody loved the show that was here so uh, great crowd great event and um, you know Chase Rice brought his dog out on stage he kind of stole the All show right. during his set and <laughs> he just kind of wandered the stage getting a pet from the people up up close in the pit and uh, he made a reference. To always liking to play Des Moines because of the Kurt Warner uh, banner that's hanging. Oh, so nice. That was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, you don't think about like uh, these artists probably travel with you know their families, their pets probably in the in the yeah in the bus with them. So that's kind of cool. Bring the dog out. I love it. I can't imagine uh, you know what like how does that sound interact with the dog's ears and you know <laughs> he said he's a two year old dog and just out hanging out hanging out on stage so living life on the road I guess. Cool. Some other some other big news uh, that came out this week. The Iowa Wolves uh, signed Lance Stevenson to their roster. The Wolves got home games this Thursday and Friday against Cleveland Charge. We, I guess we don't know for sure if Stevenson's going to be playing, but I think there's a pretty good chance that he could get in there. Uh, and you were telling me Luca Garza may be back too from the Big Wolves. So uh, some excitement coming around with the Wolves this this weekend. Uh, ho- yeah, hopefully. You know, Garza hasn't been um, down here yet. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, since opening night. So. You never know when that's gonna that stuff's gonna happen. You know, it kind of leads into the big event you guys have coming up, the High V Hawkeye Showcase, Saturday, December sixteenth. Got the Iowa men versus Florida A M at three thirty, and the Iowa women, Caitlin Clark, Cleveland State at six o'clock, uh, or around there, I guess maybe thirty minutes after the men's game. But man, you guys have one of the hottest, the, the best basketball players coming into your building this weekend. Should be a should be a good show for for Iowa fans. Oh man, it was a hot ticket. You know, once we announced the games, um, everybody, you know, that we talked to was super excited to get, to get Iowa in for a doubleheader is is fantastic. Um, You know, I know Cleveland state was in the the tournament last year, so um, they're not playing South Carolina or UConn, Mm -hmm. uh, but a good non-conference matchup with a really talented team in Cleveland state. And um, we always like it because it's a chance for people from the Western part of the state. They don't have to drive all the way over to Iowa city to see their teams, you know, they, mm-hmm. to see the Sanfords from Waukee or Caitlin Clark. Um, they have a chance to, to get to Des Moines to see them play uh, versus driving all the way over to Iowa City. So it's great for the state. Um, we're excited to host it. The, the event's sold out. So, uh, you know, we just need Saturday to get here so we can have some fun. That's awesome. You know, thinking of Caitlin Clark coming into the building really got me thinking. And I put this I put this out on my Twitter just about some of the, the best basketball players we've seen come through Wells Fargo arena. There's, there's been so many from the, from the high school talents, uh, through the college ranks that so you guys have obviously had the, the Hy-Vee big four show sure. the, the big four classes that came through. And, you know, I know you've hosted some prep events, um, man, who are some of the best players that you've seen in, in your years working at the, the event center? Oh gosh. I mean, you know, I think there's a lot of different categories for that, right? So there's like the best players. And then I think there's the best stories. Um, and then I think it's the, you know, those those ones that, you know, maybe you, you forget about because mm-hmm. the building's been almost 20 years old. So, yeah. you know, one of the things that I look back on is which I think is really neat is who's played here for multiple teams. You know, mm-hmm. I, we threw that out on, on Twitter. He did a great job of putting that out there and had mm-hmm. a lot of discussion. Mm-hmm. Talk about the Harrison Barnes teams and the Doug McDermott teams. And, you know, one of the cool things about it is that, yeah, yeah two NBA players on that team, but also a G League player. Boo Boo Paolo was mm-hmm. also on that Ames team. Mm-hmm. People forget about that. And so Boo Boo played here for Ames and won a state title, mm-hmm. came back with Iowa State and played in the Big Four Classic, mm-hmm. and then came back as part of the G League. So that's kind of a neat thing where you can follow somebody's career all the way through. Was he one of the best? No, because you can't beat Steph Curry and <laughs> Harrison Barnes and, and Brittany Griner and, and oh, some sure. of those. So, yeah. um, you know, I think I look at it, somebody mentioned Curtis Stenson. Yeah. You know, Stenson, another one played here in the, the Mediacom Cyclone Classic back in 2005. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the Cyclones played Ohio State, plays here in college, again, comes back uh, and wins a title with the, the D League at that yeah. point with the Iowa Energy. And then last year, he gets to sit in the stands and watch his son win a state title for Valley. So another cool story there. Maybe not the the greatest player that's ever, you know, played basketball, but just a cool story and, and a local celebrity here because he's done a great job and, and stuck around the community. Yeah. Did you know that I went to Ames High School with those guys? So that was, I got to be there for those state title runs really? in 09 and 10. Yeah. Yeah. That was really fun to be like in the student section to cheer those guys on for those undefeated seasons. So, and then to come back to when the Warriors came and did that, that preseason game, 
um, against the Nuggets, I believe it was. See, yep. that was that was right before the the Warriors kind of hit their peak and won their first uh, championship. So Harrison Barnes got to come back and get that hometown ovation, and um, he kind of stole the show, kind of from <laughs> guys like yeah. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, who are great players. And I think Draymond Green is even on that team too. Um, so it's cool to see where those guys, are, those careers have have taken off. Um, and what and like, happened? And what happened to that team that year? They What's that? The Warriors. The NBA final. They, they won the final. Yeah. So, so. You, we got that. We got a sneak peek, the all access look behind the behind the scenes at that Warriors team before they. That's right. Well, your they really your, took your buddy off. Chris always talks about the he had that fanatics bump or whatever he called it. You know, with people coming in and you know the Warriors came in and won the title that year, and then a couple years mm-hmm. later we had uh, the St. Louis Blues here for a preseason oh, NHL right. game. Yeah, and they ended up winning the title as well. So kind of a cool thing to come through Wells Fargo Arena to win a win a title. I got to give a shout out to some of our listeners who chimed in. So one yeah. one, list, one guy said Larry Bird when he was with the uh, with Indiana State over at Vets. So I know it didn't count as Wells Fargo, but playing through Des Moines, obviously, obviously when they were playing uh, against, it must have been when they were playing Drake. Did they play over there? Drake um, played there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. AJ Green, obviously, uh, NBA player now with the Bucks. I guess he played with uh, on the Cedar Falls teams with Jack Campbell. Didn't realize that, but that's kind of a cool name okay. uh, that that played there. And then who could forget? Obviously, um, Audie Crooks, the, the Iowa State uh, prep, you know, the prep player who was uh, Bishop Garrigan, I believe, one A. Yeah. Um, now, now a freshman star with the Iowa State women's basketball team. She just an all around great athlete. But she, you know, on the women's side, she really turned some heads and really did some cool things in the building there. Man, has she taken off this year or what? I mean, she was yeah. fantastic to watch here. We loved watching her. Um, you know, side note, one of my favorite things is when a state champion repeats another year because then I don't have to chase down a New Jersey to put up on our wall. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, she yeah. was fantastic to watch. I mean, the the women's basketball game here has been fantastic. L.A. Ruffridge from Pocahontas area. Yeah. You know, she's the state's leading scorer uh, in state history. So she played here in the state tournament as well. Um, so it's really cool. And then from the college, the college ranks, mm-hmm. who can forget, uh, Brittany Griner played here yep. um, against Tennessee and Pat Summit's last game as head coach at Tennessee. Yeah. Um, so Griner had a dunk that weekend. Uh, really neat to see. And yeah, I mean, the the talent that's come through here has been been phenomenal. Any uh, last kind of last minute things people should know if they're coming down to to Wells Fargo Arena to watch the Hawkeyes this weekend? You're saying advanced parking is sold out, but the, there will be maybe some availability to get in the day of. Yeah, so we do uh, we do sell advanced parking for us a portion of our lot. We never sell the entire lot because with so many different events going on in the convention center and the arena, um, it's really hard to predict you know what parking needs we're going to have. So we always leave some for day of. Um, that advanced reserve parking is sold out. Yeah. So your best chance. Really, your best chance is to just get downtown early, uh, find a spot along the Skywalk or the parking garage over at 7th and Center and and park and then walk over. Um, you could get lucky and, and, you know, get in. If you get in early, there might be a spot open in our lot. But the better route would be to kind of use that alternate route downtown uh, and find a parking garage or street parking somewhere. And like you always say, get there early. Give yourself some time. You know, there's going to be, you know, traffic coming off the interstate. You know, get there to watch both games. Your ticket gets you into both uh, men's and women's games. So, you know, get there with plenty of time. Um, enjoy yourself. Have a good time down at the at Wells Fargo Arena. Yeah, and again, doors open at 2 o'clock. So, you don't yep. – the game tips off at 3.30 uh, yep. on the Big Ten Network, the men's game. And so, doors open at 2. Game starts mm-hmm. at 3.30. That women's game is scheduled for 6 o'clock. Obviously, that will depend on timing of the men's game. So, it will start either at 6 o'clock or 35 – or 30 minutes after the men's game. Uh, ends if it if it ends up running late well speaking of uh, high level basketball the harlem globetrotters are coming back to wells Fargo right. arena coming back to des moines i think they come every year right they come back and do a show most years at least most years yeah the only difference this year is they're they're here in january uh january 7th so typically mm-hmm. they've been a march play for us uh, mm-hmm. march or even april and so right after the new year so the, you know get that holiday gift out there and um get the globetrotters so you can see the Savannah Bananas in the summer and the Globetrotters in the winter. <laughs> I, man, it's, it's been too long since I've been to a Globetrotters uh, event. Those, those are the, the one time I went there. Um, they, they, I think they did like a pre-game deal where they brought people on the crowd and you could spin the ball with the players and they would kind of teach you some tricks and stuff. Do they still kind of do stuff like that, or is that maybe a separate ticket, or how do you yeah. get, how do you get that level of access? Yeah, first and foremost, you got to have a ticket to the game, right? So they do okay. have a couple different upsells that you can do that. 
that get you down on the court. Um, it's called the the magic pass. Um, okay. So that's exactly what you're talking about, where you can go down before cool. you get here pretty early and, and you go down and spin the ball or shoot a free throw or get some mm-hmm. autographs and some of that stuff. So that is a separate uh, upsell ticket that you'll need. So you have to have both the game ticket and the magic pass. Inevitably, someone will buy just the magic pass, show up at the door, and that won't gain them entry into the event. They have to have an event ticket okay. as well. So just a warning there. Uh, they've got a celebrity court pass as well. So all that information is on uh, either HarlemGlobetrotters.com or our website, HivyTix.com. But it's just a fun event for kids. I think I brought all three of my kids at different times uh, to see the event because I want to come every year. So I'll just you know bring a different kid each time. <laughs> yeah, I would highly recommend you get that 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 pass because that really does get you the full the full access, the full kind of experience of what the Globetrotters are all about. I mean, the show is absolutely fantastic as it is, but um, to get that up close view and kind of uh, mingle, interact with those, with those basketball players is really kind of fun. So, yeah. And if you've seen it, you know, they, they've got their old staples that they, mm-hmm. that they do with the, you know, the, the water in the bucket and the confetti yep. and all that, but they've added some different um, unique things to it over yep. the course of time. So it's, you're not getting the same show every year. They're, they're always looking at what else they can do and, yeah, you know, I'm sure it's very competitive basketball too. What it, you might be here when the Generals win. I don't know. Well, Monday, December 18th, Monday Night Raw, WWE returns to Wells Fargo Arena. Chris Williams and I are going to be there. I I absolutely cannot wait. We're going to be ringside with uh, one of our listeners from two guys named Chris. Uh, I don't know if you've seen any of these fun promos coming in, but we have some some really active listeners who who really are cutting some really fun promos at our guys. Man. <laughs> Hassel's taking a beating on those. I know. <laughs> I've, I've watched a few of them, and I'm like, this, that's brutal. And I feel I know. bad for the guy. I know. It's fun, though, man. <laughs> he, de- he, de- he deserves some of it. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. Um, but no, we uh, we obviously, we, we're going to send some of our listeners to the show. We, there's tickets are still available, I believe, for the show, too, right? HyVTix.com. Yep. Tickets will stay available uh, all cool. the way through. Uh, so you can get them. You know, leading up to Monday night, you know, the best seats you can get are going to be now if you go on. But uh, mm-hmm. you can always walk up and buy tickets at the door as well. Uh, Seth Rollins, obviously, uh, in Iowan, will be back in the building, I, I believe. Seth, uh, they call him Seth freaking Rollins. Can I Seth say that? Freakin on the Rollins, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Um, man, there's going to be some great, some great talent coming back. We're not sure. I guess I'm not sure yet about the whole CM Punk thing. I know we talked about that last time, but. Um, he's back in WWE. Maybe he'll be back. He's a Midwest guy from Chicago. So hey, maybe quick, we'll see. Quick story for you. Uh, I was okay. listening to uh, one of the local radio stations this week, driving into work and yep. somebody called in about Cody Rhodes and yep. they, they were talking about Chris Williams and Cody road and, you know, like, Oh, he always mentioned this Cody road and, and the host <laughs> on the radio station said, well, yeah, he's, he's there's a wrestler named Cody Rhodes. And so they were getting all confused yep. about the, the wrestler versus Cody Road is uh, the sponsor. Mississippi River Distilling Company, right. a proud supporter of uh, CycloneFanatic.com, one of their great sponsors. But yeah, I don't think there's any correlation. You know, Cody Rhodes is the son of Dusty Rhodes, reg- uh, legendary uh, WWE wrestler. But um, I know there's been some, I don't know, is it controversy? But he, he kind of has flipped between the two wrestling companies, AEW and WWE. So now he's back yeah. with WWE. So he's a big star. He'll be yeah, in the building AEW, too. AEW, you know, took off there for a while, but you know, WWE has been such a great partner and and doing great shows with us since yeah. since we've been around. So uh, I'm fortunate to have them back. A lot of times they come back twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had SmackDown last time and getting a Monday Night Raw. I mean, that's their that's their show. So it's it's really fun. And that's I mean that's the week before Christmas and. I, I heard something that they may, are they recording multiple shows that night? You know, the, they've, the they've, following they've, Monday will be Christmas. So yeah, they've done that in the past. Okay. Um, I'm not aware of that. You know, okay. we were just talking about it in the office the other day. So yeah. uh, I don't know if they're doing that double taping last time yeah. they did that here. They said that they were doing that well in advance. So um, I, I don't have that info right now. So I doubt it, but yeah, I, I think they were saying last time they did that, um, the in-between there were like, weren't commercial breaks. It was just like wrestling straight through. So yeah, it was get, <laughs> get it on. The... Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, Hey, uh, Chris Williams, who we were talking about actually got a chance to sit down with a WWE wrestler, Chad Gable. Are you familiar with the work of Chad Gable? You know, no, I'm not a huge wrestling fan at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointing. Uh, Chris and, and the guys now, but um, yep. um, is there anything to do with the name? 
So there's a slight nod to the Iowa wrestling icon, Dan Gable. There's no relation, of course. They okay. All these guys have the, their wrestling stage name. So uh, his, I don't think his real name is actually Dan Gable, but let's keep that a secret. Okay. <laughs> but he's from Minnesota, so he's a local guy, obviously a big wrestling state up there, Hi, Iowa, Minnesota, big wrestling states. He was a state uh, wrestling champion in Minnesota, as you mentioned, competed in the 2012 London Olympics. Um, but yeah, Chris Williams got a chance to sit with, sit down and talk with Chad about coming to coming to Des Moines, Wells Fargo Arena coming up on Monday. All right, guys, Chris Williams here, and I'm y'all know I'm a huge WWE fan. We've been doing the promotion for Raw coming up on Monday for a few weeks now, and I'm excited to interview you guys. The second time I've interviewed Chad Gable, who. He has a connection with our state because of his amateur wrestling background, a former Olympian. And Chad, give us the background on your on your stage name. You're paying yeah, homage so to the all-time great Dan Gable, right? I'm not embarrassed to say I completely stole it from Mr. Dan Gable himself, uh, the legend. Um, fortunately for me... Uh, I have since met Dan multiple times and he essentially kind of like gave me his blessing. Uh, for those that don't know, Dan is like a big supporter, you know, of pro wrestling, which wasn't always the case with amateur wrestling community. Like overall, mm -hmm. they didn't always support and weren't always the biggest fans of what we do in WWE. So it's really cool to have his blessing. And I know that uh, Dan has grandkids and stuff that are just huge fans of what we do. They go to all the shows and stuff. So I've met them as well. And uh, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. I've gotten to do sit downs with him. I've, I've read his books. Have you ever had his beer? I don't know if you're much of a beer drinker. Do you know yeah, have a beer yeah, I have down Gable? there. I've had it in Waterloo, actually. Yeah, it's he's yeah. he's the best. I we all adore him. What? So you you wrestled at Indiana, right? Uh, I went to college in Northern Michigan. I grew up in Minnesota. Oh. Okay, for yeah. some reason I thought you went to Indiana. Regardless, that would be a, uh, you... you might be thinking of Jason, my old tag team partner. He went that's to it. Okay, yes. yes, I knew one of you guys. There you go. Okay, because you yeah. guys both came in the last time I I talked with you. Yeah, that's right. We... You're well, it was up... a long time ago. You ain't kidding. No, yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting old here. So yeah, you're growing too. up, and you're this badass amateur wrestler. <laughs> what did the state of Iowa mean? Because we get. Like we're just so used to it, right? We're the we're kind of right. like this wrestling mecca, and we I feel right. like our state almost can take it for granted how big of a deal it yeah. is here. When you're not in Iowa, what what is that like? So you guys create an aura about yourself, obviously, as a wrestling community. And then I just remember as a kid, like you know, anytime we would travel down there for tournaments, like kind of regional tournaments. Uh, or regional like nationals and stuff like that you'd run into an iowa kid that you'd never heard of or you didn't know about he'd never been at any of the nationals before didn't look like much uh but then you'd wrestle him and he's like twice as strong as you he's pulling out these moves that you've never and it's like where do these kids come from so uh you guys got this aura where you're just like kind of breeding these awesome wrestlers in secret and then they come out of nowhere and and blow your mind so I lost some very frustrating matches to guys I'd never heard of before in, in my youth, for sure, from Iowa. Yeah, no that 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 seems just about perfect. So yeah. when it comes to pro wrestling, and it it does feel like there's a lot more of these amateur guys. It's just you know, Kurt Angle was Kurt Angle. I don't know if he was the first, but he was the first like big one, right? To kind of sure. get that ball moving for you guys. Yeah. Is that is that door? You, you mentioned Dan Gable being more into it now. Is that door more open yeah. for some of these amateur guys? So what I believe happened is, and not believe, it did, is like a few years ago, roughly around the time I was finishing up with Greco, so 2012, right after the Olympics, um, that's kind of how I got involved, was they had some scouts at the Olympics that I met. Mark Henry was there along as a talent. Like They were looking for you know legitimate athletes with real athletic backgrounds, uh, to kind of transition away from just, you know, the bodybuilder type guys that we're, we're used to seeing on WWE. And uh, so I lucked out at that time because it was kind of the the crux or the influx of that. But now since then, with the perform, we have something called the Performance Center down in Orlando where everybody trains uh, to get to the main roster. 
And I was down there yesterday and it's just all athletes. It's all former athletes, whether it's football players, gymnasts, you know, anything wrestlers. Um, and so that's what they're looking for. They're looking for people that can, that can go in the ring now, because I think they've, uh, you know, when I say they, I mean, who the higher ups in the company and the people that run it and write our shows are looking for people that can wow people athletically these days, uh, because we, we, we have kind of the entertainment thing down, you know, like we know how to tell stories. We know how to, how to have a TV show. So we got to back that up with the athletic talent. And so that's why you're seeing that now. And amateur wrestling is just the perfect kind of foray into what we do because you it gives you all the body awareness you need. You know how to train. You know how to protect yourself. So it's it's a good background to have. You're on the road, you know, hundreds of days out of the year. Do you do you still watch college wrestling? Because it's a huge deal here. We're all locked into it. The Cyhawk right. duel was on ESPN. It was the first. Uh, college duel ever to be on ESPN this year, That's which so is a big cool. deal yeah. for us. How much do you keep in yeah. touch with all that now? Uh, more than anything, I keep in touch with uh, like the international side of things. So Greco Roman okay. for me, um, yep. my former training partner, Andy Bizik now is the head coach at uh, the Olympic training center in Northern Michigan, where I trained. So that's cool to watch like my old best friend and, and training partner now coach where we trained not only that, but my younger brother is his assistant coach. So now oh, awesome. I get to like keep tabs on all of that and, and have like a cool connection still with our alma mater. So I follow the Greco stuff. I am <clears throat> fully intending to go to Paris for the Olympics next summer with my family and stuff. Treat it as kind of a vacation, but also watch some of the Greco Roman wrestling and a bit of the freestyle too. So be cool. Yeah, it it felt like it was a huge deal here about ten. When they were trying 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there was the Olympic controversy with, with yep. wrestling. Feels like we're through that, right? Doesn't feel like the yeah. sport, like, even like with flow wrestling now, like you can watch these re like anywhere. It feels like the sport is ascending and they've got some key TV deals coming up. I, I think we're in a good spot. Do you? Yeah, I do. I think they, that was a big wake up call uh, for everybody uh, that we had yeah. to do something and they've kind of made some alterations, you know, to the rules, things like that. But not only that, they've made it, uh, I guess I would say kind of aesthetically a little more pleasing. So if you're just watching it in general, um, it just looks better, you know, and, and people have a hard time, like as wrestling fans, sometimes I think we kind of get closed off and we have our own view of the sport. Like it's the greatest sport in the world. I'll say that blanket statement. But from an outside viewer that we're trying to get to, to watch what we do and enjoy it, they may not appreciate like the push pull and the little subtleties and the, 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 yeah. the wrestling aspects of it from the get go. So to dress it up and make it just more visually appealing to people was a big step, I think as well. So that helps. Well, this is great. I know that uh, Monday night it's kind of Seth Rollins country over here. Cause he's, he's front. Yeah. You see a ton of, Rollins but oh, yeah. hopefully hopefully people see this interview and you're going to get a huge reception on Monday night in Des Moines I know I you will so. we we appreciate your your background and what you've given to the sport that we so dearly love so thank you for your time man this was really fun and hopefully I'll catch yeah. up with you in five more years hopefully you'll be the yeah champion. let's not wait so long next time <laughs> all right <laughs> sounds man, thank great you. Chad Gable with WWE you'll see him on Monday night here in Des Moines well, that was a super cool interview. Chris Williams and Chad Gable from WWE. Of course, uh, Monday Night Raw coming back to Wells Fargo Arena December 18th. Get those ticks at hyveticks.com. Really excited to go to that show with Chris and sit with some of our Iowa Everywhere listeners. That'll be really, really fun to do and uh, kind of treat our, our great loyal listeners to that. So we thank you guys for doing that and partnering yeah. with us with this contest. It was really fun. Yeah, I don't know many events that you can, you know, run a promotion like that and, and really go after people. But uh, you guys knocked it out of the park. The listeners were great. So looking for, forward to it. For sure. Well, Christmas is coming up. Obviously a great chance to give people the the gift of an experience, a show coming up at Wells Fargo Arena, the Iowa Event Center. We mentioned in the last show, Avenge Sevenfold at Tickets and Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, the event's coming up. Uh, Avenge Sevenfold, March 15th. So that one's coming up sooner. The Sebastian Maniscalco one's coming up December 15th. So got a little time for that. But those tickets are available, right? HyveyTix.com? HyveyTix.com. And really, it's, uh, you know, I think we've said it before, but we've got everything from rodeo to country music to rock um, to family shows and, and, and comedy. So something for everyone. And if you're not really sure what you want, 
uh, there's always gift cards, which are gift cards are an easy way to get people down here and enjoy an experience. Everybody's got enough stuff. They just, the experience is what they're looking for this holiday season. Awesome. We want to remind people to follow us, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, and remember to uh, just follow us on wherever our podcasts are, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. For Adam Flack, I'm Matt Van Winkle. Thanks so much for tuning in to All Access with the Iowa Event Center. We'll see you again next time.